Alrighty, now we're gonna continue with the multivariable integrals and we're gonna look at option number two. When you have a general region and you wanna do it as dx dy instead of dy dx. Sorry. In the previous video we saw dy dx and how it works and now we wanna look at dx dy. Try to figure out how it works. So, difference being now, your slice is horizontal and it gets moved upward. This is integrating out x first and then y. You'll have some rightmost function and some leftmost function. Before it was your upper and lower function, now it's your right and left function. These functions have to be x equal functions of y. So I've labeled them h2 of y and h1 of y. The bigger one is the one that's further to the right. And so what they end up then, uh, whenever you make your slice, it's good to make these circles at the end because they will then be the places where you have your upper and lower limit inside. Then you move that slice vertically upward from a low point of some constant y equals c to a constant y equals d. Those become your upper and lower limit outside. Okay, so in general, we have this symbol, f of xy is the function we're integrating and finding the volume under. This here appears on the floor in the xy plane. We're integrating above this region. Generically, we call the region R. And now we can get specific and say exactly how we're going to do it. dA is a symbol that says you can either do dx dy or dy dx. And we're going to find out there's a third option later when, when the region is mostly circular in nature. But we're gonna do this one as dx dy in this video. And so then the inside integral has functions in it and they're functions of y. We have h1 is the lower function of y, h2 is the upper function of y. They're the inside limits of integration. The outside limits, they will always be numerical, c and d, the lowest y and then the highest y. So it's very visual. You gotta get a good drawing of your region. You gotta put in your slice. Make sure your rightmost function is always your rightmost function. Make sure your leftmost function is always your leftmost function. And those become your bounds on the inside. And you're integrating with respect to x first. Okay, that's dx dy explained. Now let's look at an example. Our function is e to the x over y. And our region that we're interested in is the region that's bounded by these three curves, uh, well, two lines and a curve. We have uh, y equals the cube root of x, uh, y equals two, and y equals x. And so we'll have uh, the hardest part of this one actually getting the drawing. Uh, y equals the cube root of x has the blue, uh, let me color that in blue. Y equals the cube root of x. And then y equals x, that's in red. Let's go ahead and color that one in red. Y equals x. And then in black, we have y equals two. So our region then, is the region, it sort of looks like a triangle here. Two parts of it are straight lines, but the third part is the curve, y equals root x. That's our region that we're calling R. That is the region where we want to uh, integrate above that region in the xy plane. And underneath our surface, which is e to the xy, okay? Now, uh, dy dx is how we talked about last time, and that's with a vertical slice. Let me just discuss that quickly. So a vertical slice would be fine, where you have an upper function and you have a lower function. The upper function is the red, y equals x. The lower function is the, the blue, y equals the cube root of x. But then something changes, though. As you move from left to right, the upper function now becomes y equals two and the lower function stays as the y equals the cube root of x. Not that it's undoable, but we have to recognize that change in upper function. What it means to you then is you can't do this in one single double integral, you're gonna need two double integrals. So instead, let's try the other way. Where we slice horizontally and move that upward. Let's try this as dx dy. Put the circles at the ends. 
these functions have to have their names x equals some function on y. So we solve for x by cubing, right? We'll have x equals y cubed. Let's go ahead and write that in blue on the other graph. x equals y cubed will be your upper limit on the inside. That's the rightmost, the biggest x. The smallest x is on the line y equals x. Color that one in red. y equals x, that's your lower limit inside. And then you move that vertically upward. Um, these two guys cross at y equals one. And so then you move vertically upward from one to two, so you have your lower limit outside and you have your upper limit outside. Okay, generically we have this symbol. It's the x dy that we're doing this integral, but now we know exactly the bounds. Inside we have a, um, uh, maybe I should have written that one in red as a, uh, uh, x equals y. I know it's y equals x, x is y, they're the same thing. But I want you to know y is the version we need. y to y cubed on the inside, and then x, uh, then, then y goes from one to two on the outside. x goes from y to y cubed, and y goes from one to two. This integrand is kind of complicated. It's e to the x over y. We actually couldn't even do the integration with respect to y first based off of this integrand. Couldn't find the antiderivative. But now, with respect to x, it's fine. It's like integrating e to the x over 4. Thinking about that as some kind of e to the 1 fourth x. Whenever you integrate e to the kx, the antiderivative is 1 over k e to the kx. You have to do the reciprocal of the, of the multiplier on x. Well, if it's a fraction like this 1 fourth, the reciprocal is a 4. And so, uh, what we get is 4e to the 1 over 4x. That's the antiderivative. It's 1 over 1 fourth. Okay? So then for us, then, playing the role of 4 is a y. So instead of 1 over 1 over y, we just call it y. And the antiderivative is going to be y e to the x over y. Remember, you're supposed to hold the other variable constant. So we, if you need to, like actually replace it with a number. Try to figure out what that integration would be with a number in there, and then just do a replacement back. Now remember, we are replacing x equals, uh, we're replacing x with y cubed, we're replacing x with y. Replacing x with y cubed, then we'd have right here in the exponent, y cubed over y, well, that's y squared. And then the lower limit would be y over y, that's just gonna be a one. And that's how we end up with our y squared exponent and one exponent. This multiplier out front, it just stays there, y. And now we're looking at a calc one integral, um, but maybe you'd think, you can, if you can't do it mentally, then you'd have to do a u sub to handle that first integral. The second integral it might look complicated, but e is just a number. It's the same as integrating seven y. I mean, you know, whole, you know, e stays there as a constant. You just integrate y as y squared over two. When it comes to this first integral, though, we're going to think of a u sub basically. And uh, if we were to let u equal y squared, then du is two y dy. Our job to be place y dy, so we divide by two. And so that's how we end up with one half. Um, and then that is uh, one half e to the u integral du. And so that's one half e to the u. And so u was y squared. And that's how we ended up with our one half e to the y squared. Okay. And then e, it's kind of redundant to put that one there, but I just put it there. And then now we're plugging in y equals 2 and y equals 1. Uh, I guess there's a half in both of them. We could take the half all the way out. But uh, you put the 2 in, you're talking about e to the 4. And then on this one, it would be minus uh, 2e. So 1 half e to the 4 minus 2e, that's when you plug a 2 in. And then when you plug a 1 in, 
something nice happens, kind of strange. One half e to the one minus one half e to the one, if they zero out. And then this, this first part is your answer. Okay, dx dy, horizontal slice, move vertically. Okay, we'll do more examples, but I just wanted to introduce dx dy to you. Uh, the previous video introduced dy dx to you, and now we're talking about introducing dx dy and doing just one example. Okay, stay tuned for more videos where we uh, try to figure out how do you decide? Is it gonna be dy dx or is it gonna be dx dy? We talked about it a little bit here. Dx dy required two integrals, and I just kind of mentioned the fact that you couldn't integrate with respect to y first because of the antiderivative of e to the seven over y. You don't have what you need to find that antiderivative. You're missing something to do a u sub. So the integrand would tell us that we can't do y first. So sometimes the region, sometimes the integrand, that's what our next video is gonna be. Trying to decide dx dy or dy dx based off of the integrand, based off of the region, maybe a combination of both. That'll be in the next video. Thank you. Uh, like and subscribe. My daughter tells me I should say that. Um, hit the notifications button. But um, yeah, comment down below if you have any questions and uh, I'll be sure to answer.